Yeah, so I'm Jen. Um, I work as a, a senior academic manager in ISI Dublin. Um, I've been working here for about 15 years and um, yeah, doing, doing a few different roles uh, from teaching to um, uh, yeah, academic manager. And uh, yeah, it's been a wonderful journey, especially mm -hmm. the last year. It's been the, the most challenging and uh, yeah. So can I ask, start by asking you then about the challenges that the pandemic has posed in your school or classroom? Yeah, so um, quite a few challenges and uh, yeah, as I say, we welcome the learning experience, but um, um, the, fir the first thing that, that the most difficult was uh, the reluctant students uh, who um, um, you know, faced this uh, pandemic with us and they didn't want to, to study online and they felt that um, classes were not going to be the same as face-to-face -face classes, and they they thought that um, no, they they are they were asking for refunds or um, and unfortunately we couldn't give refunds, uh, but we did give uh, vouchers and to all the students who were uh, who went back home, um, and we were understanding to to all the students uh, and try to help as much as possible um, in all their circumstances. We, we found that um, the students who did continue with us, which was about half of the students, um, of our, about 700 that we, we started with uh, just before the lockdown, about 300 stayed with us. Um, and then the number increased to about 350 uh, during those months as well. Um, the connection and the internet problems were, uh, I think the, the, the biggest challenge. Uh, and uh, I suppose student living arrangements um, um, was making it difficult for some of them to connect uh, to the classes. But um, so we tried to give, you know, give some of them holidays um, and we, we always try to ask them to stay connected with us, communicating uh, what their situation was and we were understanding as much as possible. We're, at the same time while complying with all the rules that we, we thought at first because they were not communicated with us straight away as um, we wanted to keep classes as stable as possible um, con continuing with the three hours of classes every day with the elective classes and everything um, as much as possible. Um, so I think it was, we asked from the students is communication and uh, and then we were we were understanding and, and helpful as much as possible yeah so because uh, it was a changing situation in a way from from last march when we took we saw like a two week uh closure was uh going to be all of all it was and now here we are in november uh with another one and um, how have you how did you respond to the evolving challenge uh as it went along um so I'll tell you what, during, during the, um, the first lockdown, we, um, what, we, what we, I tried to do was support the teachers as much as possible so that they had the best um, tips and materials and online platforms so that they could uh, be there for the students as much as possible. We were, all the staff was really were communicating with the students as much as possible as well. And what we felt was that even online classes ended up being more effective in a way, more uh, teachers were more, even more caring, more, more individually uh, checking on students. Uh, the WhatsApp group started um, in, in every class uh, or in most classes. Um, we had a WhatsApp group with, this, with the teachers and we had to, we, we shared tips and, and, and materials as much as possible. And um, um, I thought that it was, it was just, the feedback basically that we had from the students was that they absolutely loved online classes. Even, you know, as much as they liked face-to-face -face classes, but even more at times, you know, um, they really felt that the teachers were so um, helpful and, and caring and um, yeah, it was lovely. 
it was lovely. We actually could keep that sense of community that we have here in ISI so much. Um, you know, the social program uh, was moved online and we did a lot of activities with the students. We even had um, a welfare officer who was there to connect with them if, you know, anyone was, you know, feeling anxious or worried. So um, that was how we adapted um, and we learned so much and we are, we are actually grateful in a way the fact that we went paperless for all those six months was wonderful and that we we learned so much about online um, materials and, and platforms that we kept all that uh, when we went back face to face. So it, it was an enriching experience for all of us. And I think it um, it was hard, but but it was it was great. And we ended up catering and helping all the students even with all the all their difficulties and um and and yeah the community kept, kept growing and and kept us as vibrant as ever and um and yeah i think that the, the experience was was in reaching um and i think we can learn a lot from it and uh, continue up applying all the things that we uh, creatively learned uh, during this time to to enrich our classes going forward. And what would you say are the the, the things you have learned? I mean, that it's not just how to do this or how to do that, but as a kind of in a holistic sense uh, about what's important to people or what works. Uh, what do you think you have learned from the whole experience? Um, To, to care, to care, to be there for the students. Um, we, we, we were always there for the students, but this was, a, you know, a, um, a, a different level to um, realizing that even if we had 300 students in the school, um, they, were, they were a person with a, with a whole um, history and, and all the difficulties that they were facing and we had to be there for them more more than ever and um and that was and, and i i feel we did it even even the feedback that we're getting um now and, and and during the during the first lockdown um even with all the complaints that the student had we um we were there for them so i think that the care the level of care and and trying to continue uh, building that community um at a human level was the best thing, really. Yeah. So if we have to look forward then, uh, what would you say we will keep from this, um, this period? What do you think will go back to where we were before and what new things might kind of come in uh, in, the, in the medium to long term? Um, I think that, um, there's going to be a huge, um, we're going to learn what the best of both worlds of the online classes and the and the face-to-face -face classes and merge and have a, a an even better model. And I think that that's that's what's coming. We are we don't want to go back to what we used to do. Um, because there were there were flaws there and i think that we can learn from um you know the more eco-friendly paperless um um model um and there is huge resources huge resources online uh, a lot of um materials that we can use and and hopefully we'll be able to to combine them all you know the fact that you know with social distancing the pair work is is uh, more difficult um you know, we can try to do that, you know, um, a different way, you know, and um, I think that there's huge potential to, to, to learn from the benefits of both and then merge them. I, we're not there yet, ISI, what we tried to do was to try to go back and give the students the ISI that they used to no, and um, and also just to, to try to give uh, GNIB and ILEP the trust that okay we are, you know, 
doing these face to face we are you know don't don't uh, don't hesitate to let anyone any students come in through immigration because we're going to be there for them but um there's huge huge benefits from learning you know all the benefits of the online um classes and and merge it so we will will we'll look at that model and in in the future as i say now we are um just trying to give the students the um, the face to face classes as soon as we can again um but we are definitely looking into a hybrid model um in the future so what you're saying, obviously, that's not possible now for 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 other reasons. But that's something that I've heard. Were you? I don't know if you were, were in any of the equals conference, but I, I was get, gathering that from a lot of the speakers there that blended or hybrid, if they're different things, which I'm not sure about, are going to be part of the model uh, or need to be part of the model uh, somewhere in between online and 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 face to face. Uh, so that's how you, that's how you you see the future of it. I I see the future there. I definitely see it there. Um, and also having a bit more flexibility in that um, when and if you know another lockdown happens, we are not okay. You know, transitioning again to something totally different. But it's something that um, we can adapt a little bit more easily from one model to another. Um, but as I say, we haven't implemented that yet. Uh, when during the, the few months that we were um, allowed to go back face to face, we were fully face to face, and and we had all the care and the safety that that was required to do that, and it worked quite well. There were there were a few hiccups along the way, but um, yeah, students were thrilled to to be back face to face, and and we offered um, that to them. But I think the future is something a bit more blended. Yeah. Do you want to show the some of the pictures there to kind of give an idea of what it looked like in practice when you went back into the yeah. into the school after the online period? Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So we had to be a little bit more. Um, spaced and distance. So this is the, the staff room and um, and we actually found that uh, the staff room had never been so clean and tidy uh, ever before than ever before. It was just wonderful to see um, teachers tidying up uh, after themselves so much. This is um, These are some pictures, uh, examples of classrooms and how we distant everyone. We had to put the, the tape in the um, uh, on the tables because Sometimes during pair work activities, students tended to move closer together, so we needed to separate them, uh, make sure that there was something visible for them. Um, this is the canteen, um, and these are the student lounges um, where students could, you know, have something to eat but be a bit more distant um, from each other. Um, um, again, this is the staff room from a, a different angle, and um, oh, that's a me and the kids uh, dropping um, books hand, that we, you know, the students still needed to uh, to have books during the lockdown, and that was our way of, you know, connecting again with the students and being there for them. And so, yeah, we could see them then. Um, so yeah, that's that's us. Hopefully, hopefully we'll go back to the classroom soon, and we'll be able to um, offer the students you know being here back in the in in the school but at the same time we are still connected we are still there for them in in everyone where every way we can